Probably should have tested to see if the microphone was working, but it is. Hey, Sam. I got this sample from, um, from my friends Hannah and Joe, who are fellow streamers. They, um, Hannah has music that she plays. I'm doing pretty good. Um, been pretty busy, so I haven't been doing the SEM streams. Just been a little too backed up with work, trying to get, uh, been doing teaching a summer class, and this is the last week for it, and then uh, also doing a summer mentorship program with my students and um, the ones that work in my lab, and this is the last week for that as well. So it's just like a really busy week for me, trying to get things done. But um, I got the sample in the mail today from, um, from Hannah and Joe, and uh, it's filled with these little star-shaped amoeboids. I don't know what they are, but uh, there's a bunch of them in here. It's really fascinating to watch them. Um, there's also some ciliates roaming around, like, all over the place, and some little flagellates in here. But they're really small. It's, um, it's this thing right here. It looks like a little brain cell, basically, that's moving around. And, um, they're all over the place in here. There's a bunch of them. So I'm just kind of scrolling around in here. There's some diatoms in the background there. Um, these were collected in a river. Here's another one right here. Hey, Jolkson. See these little tiny guys? They're actually moving. This is some sort of little amoeba or amoeboid. And they've got these long pseudopods right here that you used to sort of explore their environment with. Stretching off in every direction. Kind of cool. <laughs> it was a pretty nice stream the other night. There was a lot of really great um, thunder blasts, lightning bolts, and the coolest part was the, for me, is when there's lightning but there's not a lot of rain, um, and then I can actually get out from under my porch and um, do a lot more imaging of the lightning because I can see the whole sky then such as it is in my neighborhood anyway. Um, but it was kind of neat to be able to get out. It was a little late for me, but... Yeah, there was one that uh, shook our whole house before as well, so there were some really loud ones um, in the mix as well. They don't move a lot, they just kind of chill, these little amoeboids. But the pseudopods are moving around. They are changing positions. And there's a bunch of them in here. There's another one. You can see some of the stuff on the inside of it moving around as well. like last time I was having a little trouble like getting the uh, pretzel rock to not be so loud and now I think it's a little too quiet that sounds okay it's a pretty interesting little organisms I don't know what you know I don't know anything about amoebas so could be anything but this is a sample from a river this is Judd Creek and what's interesting is that this was collected <laughs> I got some Puget Sound water from um, from Hannah and Joe the 
um, two friends that are streamers. Uh, oh, it's not typing in there. Um, that's Hannah's. Uh, she sang that Di Diatom Attack song she wrote about me. Um, and this is from Judd Creek in the rapid part of the water. And it's got these really neat little star-shaped amoebas. And there's some little flagellates in there. You can see that one. Thanks for tuning in, Studio Cormix. It's nice to see you virtually. And uh, I'm not sure what they did. I think they scraped rocks for these samples in the rapids part. Um, and then they shipped it to me. So there's a bunch of like, you know, the, the ciliates that thrive in decomposing environments are doing well in here. And uh, there's some mostly rugosphenes. They look like they're little curved company voids, but um, I thought I would do one stream here where we looked at them in the light microscope, and then I'll process some of the material, get rid of all the organic mass that's kind of blotting out everything. mounted slides or we'll look at them in the SEM or both um, just to sort of compare you can see how much algal mass is here and also there's another one of those really cool little amoebas just look at little tiny stars the spines pointing off every direction but they're not actually spines I think that's their pseudopods Definitely still alive. You can see the bits moving around on the inside. Um, this is from the Judd Creek. Um, it's a little creek, I think, that feeds into the sound. Um, I think from the description, I think they just went to a beach, but it's near, sorry, they gave me uh, these little jars with the samples in them. They're like tiny little jelly jars. It looks like it says Siguela, Siguela Beach. Yeah, they're, um, they live on, Joe's parents, I think, live on Vashon Island. And um, so I, I, I'm assuming they just went kind of close to there and hung out at the beach and then went to this Judd Creek. I have two samples from the Judd Creek and then one from the beach. Bigwella Big or Sigwella? I don't know, I can't quite read it. So some little beach, um, it's, I think it's on Vashon. You know, they're musicians, they don't know anything about science, so they just went out and scraped some rocks, and I think they said they watched some videos on how to collect um, algal samples, and then sent them to me, because they were excited to sort of see what was in it. And, I mean, these samples ha are really rich with, like, stuff, like, organic -y stuff, so, you know, they would have a hard time seeing much with, um, you know, the diatoms are super small, and there's a bunch of decomposition going on in here. Um, and these ciliates are sort of crawling around everywhere. But uh, I'm going to process it, the, re the remainder of it. And um, you can see there's some really cool microbe activity right there. They're decomposing something organic. swarming that organic rich component right there. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. Just 
feasting on it. You can kind of get a sense of it right there. It's a nice, uh, clean image of it at least. little bacteria not really that interesting to look at in the microscope usually and you know they don't they don't manage the vacuum as, uh, SEMs at all so without some sort of special prep it's kind of hard to see them usually they just look like little I don't know pills or something anyway they're not super interesting but their behavior is kind of interesting in samples See, there's the slide cover I slipped off. There's another one of these little star-shaped amoeba. They're just everywhere in here. They look like little tiny brain cells. Floating around, eating bacteria probably. Super small. So I'll, yeah, I'll digest all the organic bits from these and it's a little silly if it's not moving too slow and it's going in a circle. Maybe we can catch it a little bit. You can see all the little uh, cilia around the outside of it. around in here. There's a bunch of these little ciliates that just live in their best life eating the decaying material. Hello Mrs. J, how are you doing? is loud? Oh, I can fix it. How's that? Better? It's hard for me to tell because I have it turned down here at home. So, is it still loud? Fun fact, uh, I can't tell what the sound is like for you guys. I can only hear it from my side. So. that. The amoebas feel better now. I don't think they can hear it at all. Uh, okay. It looks like they're holding hands or maybe they're getting ready to eat each other. Can't tell which. found each other. Maybe there's going to be an amoeba fight. <laughs> uh, so, that little guy zooming in and out of there, the flagellate. Um, 
what you can can't see because it's just off the screen here is um, this is like on the edge of a giant insect carcass. So there's a carapace of some sort of molt or or dead body from an insect. And when we were, it's like maybe they moved apart. The uh, amoeba had thought better of hanging out next to each other. Now they've shifted away from each other. Uh, but you can see inside of the, the molt, the bacteria are just going crazy in there. Eating at whatever was left of the inside of this thing. started feeling like sick but not sick. What are you sick from? From the music? Or from the amoebas? Or from this little insect larva? You can see it's just chocked full of all kinds of bacteria. See the little cilia around the outside of those things are very light yeah. little hairs. You're hoping for some Martian worms. I haven't seen any worms in these samples actually at all. Um, it was a fast flowing part of the little creek, and so um, I think it's just things that live attached. There's, I think these are maybe mayfly. Uh, larva or molts from mayfly and then um, there's a bunch of cool amoebas which I would not expect like where are all these amoebas living at the fast flowing water there's another one cool little guys It's a little bit like an octopus. Oh, the warmer water, yeah. Uh, where did I get these samples from? These were sent to me from Anna Rebecca and Radio Joe. And this one is from Judd Creek, which is near Puget Sound. I think on Bashan Island, we decided. We're also headed to break a no rain streak. Oh, that's rough. The little diatom looks like it's in the way of that amoeba eventually it's gonna creep over there and get it it's working its way towards it sometimes amoeba i think are just fascinating to sit and watch just they move so slowly and they interact with their environment in such a weird way. It's creeping right towards that diatom though. And four is gonna get it. Oof, 42 days without rain. Whoa, it's really close to getting that diatom. out of the way or trying to get around it. Seems like it's 
it's got one leg on it. samples. That looks like one of those little ciliates that just stopped moving. We can actually see it, but I think it's dead. It's a diatom skeleton right there. The diatom has long left it. There's no chloroplasts or anything, but that is clearly the skeleton of some sort of naviculoid. I'd probably be able to tell you what genus it was if I could actually zoom in in hot oil immersion lenses, but uh, it's a wet mouth, so can't really get a whole lot closer. Oh, is there a rated? Hi, Pizzeria. How are you doing? Um, you set off an emote explosion when you came in. You brought your 96 followers uh, along with you. Thank you for that. We're, um, we're looking at uh, some samples from Judd Creek, which is um, off of uh, Puget Sound. And another one of my... Um, my friends, another friend of mine who streams, uh, Hannah Rebecca Music. So if you like music, you might want to check her out. She does uh, indie uh, music, and she wrote. She actually wrote a song, uh, a diatom, a tech song about my stream, which I thought was amazing. Um, so you can actually see that there. Uh, how was your stream, Bazaria? Did you you were doing music? I haven't seen you on a lot recently, but I did see that you got your hair cut and it looks really nice. There's all these really creepy, cool amoebas in these samples. I've just been sort of watching some of them. Oh, you did microscopy. Oh, I wish I'd uh, tuned in. Um, I was just trying to get my stuff together. So I didn't check it out. Um, did you see anything cool? Sometimes you get really cool stuff, and sometimes you just get whatever. The sample seems to be full of uh, a bunch of little amoebas. So we've been watching some of those. And um, there's these sort of blob ones, like this guy, just kind of formless. And then um, we've seen a bunch of these little star-shaped ones with like long, skinny pseudopods. See if I can find some. And there's, you know, the stuff in the background is just organic material with a lot of diatoms and it's the leg of some sort of a insect. Thank you for bringing people in, in your raid. And, um, so it's great. I love it when you do some microscope streaming too, so. Carapace of some sort of a insect. I think it's a mayfly larva. Here's another one. I think that's a mayfly larva. We're just seeing the the molt or the outside, the exoskeleton. So it looks kind of creepy, like little plates. The usual rotifers, worms, and daphnia. Oh, that's cool. Um, here's one of these 
So some bunch of little ciliates here, but there's also one of these amoebas, the star-shaped amoebas. It's right there. So we can zoom in and look at it. See, it's got little legs sticking off in every direction. It looks like a little spiny ball. Um, but it's actually moving those little legs around. And um, so that's, this is the one I was talking about here. It's got little legs. You can see them moving them around. And um, there's another little amoeba right here, actually. You can just barely see it. Uh, it's a little guy compared to this one. And there's a bunch of diatoms and some of these ciliates. There's a little ciliate. My cat's mad because I closed the door. And it's now it's trying to get in, so I'm going to let her in. Nothing is impossible, not if you can imagine it. Day. She likes to look at what we're looking at in the microscope sometimes. Nothing is impossible. Not if you can imagine it. Nothing good. It's moving too slow. She doesn't care about amoeba. She's very picky. She likes the ones that move around a lot. So you can see this uh, maybe here is still sort of crawling around a little bit, and then there's a star-shaped one we were looking at. And this is a ciliate here. It's moving through all the all the organic debris here. It's feeding on some stuff probably. And then you can see there's some little uh, flagellate up there. Thank you for the follows. Um, sometimes I stream from my light microscope and sometimes from my scanning electron microscope. I haven't been doing many of the scanning electron microscope streams recently. Um, just been a little bit busy at work, but um, I, I have a scanning electron microscope lab at work, and um, this microscope also belongs to my lab. It's not my personal microscope, but um, I do work at home from it, and Trying to keep it separated from the students in my lab who um, might bring contagious diseases onto it if I have my eyes touching it all the time. It's usually bad uh, to share your eye contacts with other people. Um, so Nothing is impossible, the, not if you can imagine it. Um, the problems associated with COVID. Um, not because I'm afraid I'm vaccinated, but my daughter is too young to be vaccinated, so. Um, we try to keep things a little bit separated, and then my wife is also a diatomist and uh, uses a microscope at home, so. It's a cool, another cool little skeleton, exoskeleton. Some sort of insect larva. I'm seeing most of the things in here, I think, right now. For this slide. A bunch of little guys. Everything on here is pretty small. We're looking at stuff currently at 200 times magnification, and then my um, my camera can zoom in, you know, a lot closer to those than that. Um, it's, it's got a, a real camera on it. Um, but let's look at, so that was the sample from the rapids part of Chud Creek. And there's sort of like a, it's like a fast water area. And we also got sort of a still water area. So these are little jars they sent me. And um, they were just excited to collect samples and, um, and see what was in them. So I'm probably gonna uh, digest the samples in my lab and then we'll, uh, We'll take a look at what's in them without all the organic matter blocking our field of view. Probably on the scanning electron microscope. Not sure how soon that will happen. Might be a week from now. Um, once everything starts to calm down a little bit. Let's take a look at 
a sample and see if there's anything in it. I didn't spend a lot of time looking through these before we started. I just kind of glanced through them. So. Can't say for sure what's in them. There's a diatom right there. So I study diatoms as part of my research. And they are algae. They make a silica skeleton. Um, so they have a cell wall that's around them, which means that they preserve or fossilize. And they generate about somewhere between 20 and 40% of the oxygen that we breathe. So every fourth or third or fifth breath that you take is oxygen that's exclusively generated from diatoms. So there's a lot of them in the world. They live in all kinds of environments. And I'm sort of a diatom paleontologist mostly. So yeah, that's my, the microscope I'm using right now is a, a Leica DM2500. And um, this microscope, if you're curious, um, is too expensive for you probably, unless you've got a lot of money. Um, I think it, the setup that I'm using right now is $20,000 for this microscope and then um, my camera that's on here, the camera body is another $1,000 camera lens, camera body. So not for the hobbyist, um, but you don't, need a you don't need a microscope this um, powerful or expensive to look at cool stuff in the water, that's for sure. Some more of those little, that's a different some little different amoeba. See it right here. So you're not confused. You can see it's got little pseudopods and they're moving around on their own. And then this looks like it belongs to the genus Melosyra. It's a diatom. And those are the chloroplasts, the sort of golden brown stuff that you see. Nothing is impossible. And, not if you um, can imagine. Melosyra are sort of pill shaped. They're not very strongly ornamented but they might look really cool in the SEM, so. Yeah, the this microscope is 20,000, and then I have two more in my lab, um, so that's that's a lot of money, um, that are the same as this. And then I've got a stereo microscope at Leica as well, that's another $10,000 microscope, and then $170,000, $160,000 SEM. So it's not the sort of stuff that you can just get um, and I'm not saying that to brag, actually, I'm just saying it's nice for me to be able to share it with people who aren't scientists and who aren't in my lab. Um, it's kind of cool to be able to, to, um, to share science with people like this, um, with nice, high-quality uh, microscopes. <laughs> um, that is a... Uh, guy's got a flagella and it's using it to crawl with. So a little thing that sticks off the front that kind of pulls itself around with it. It's also, I think, using it to search for food. Pretty cool. Have I ever looked at beard hair under the microscope? Um, we have looked at beard hair in the scanning electron microscope, um, we spent a uh, one stream, um, my students and I, we, we collected eyelashes and eyebrow hair, and, uh, and I did put some of my beard hair on the scanning electron microscope. Um, we also looked at kitty whiskers and dog hair and cat hair, uh, fur, for, for those organisms, but um, there's another little wiggly tongue guy. Um, in the, and I have looked at it in the light microscope as well. What we were really looking for was the uh, demodex, which is like a little mite that burrows into your follicles and lives in the follicles of your eyelashes and eyebrows, and but some of your other hair might have it as well. Um, but we never found any. I don't know if we just didn't sample enough. I pulled out a bunch of my eyelashes and some of my eyebrow hairs and tried looking at it on the light microscope, which you should be able to see the demodex in. Um, and I wasn't able to find any. 
I don't know if that's just because they don't infest usually, yeah. They don't infest people till they get a little bit older, typically. And, like, I'm 50, so I thought, ah, oh, I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, you know, old enough. Uh, but uh, we even collected some from, like, 70-year-old people in the department. And um, the infestation rate, it it's not as high as you think. Like, people think, oh, everybody's crawling with these things. But that's not actually true. Um, at least from what we could tell, the infestation rate just it, it increases to when you, when you get older to a very high number but young people usually don't have them we we're kind of disappointed though because i really wanted to see some uh, little mites and um we tried a bunch of different people thinking somebody's got to have some of these but we never did find any so i don't know I yanked out enough of my eyebrow hairs to tell you that, and all my eyelash hairs to tell you that, um, it's, uh, it's really not cool. Like, r ripping out, uh, eyebrow hairs is fine, but the eyelashes are really rough to, like, yank them out kind of hurts. So, uh, I did, like, three of those, and then I was like, yeah, didn't find any, and then I was just mad about having yanked out my eyelash hairs. Um, and for what? But, uh... I didn't find any microbes in my own hair, so we tried. Uh, the music you're playing by Abstraction is from my hometown, Minneapolis. That's cool. Um, the Abstraction uh, is just part of Pretzel Rock, right? So I just have it on like lo-fi, but that's really cool to know where they're from. So they dedicated their music to allow people to stream it, which I think is amazing. Um, because it's hard for us to have music otherwise unless you play music, so very cool So it looks like the slower moving area also is full of ciliates and um, uh, These little guys with the flagellas that are spinning around here like this guy And then there's a bunch of diatom fragments and diatom pieces in here. And I saw some, uh, a bunch of different diatoms, some monoraphids, and um, that's cockanese. There's a whole bunch of little um, diatom fragments, which will all should look pretty nice on the, on the microscope, on the SEM. And maybe from the mounted samples. And then there's a whole bunch of these amoebas, which we won't be able to see in the SEM. Um, because they'll have to digest the sample in order to allow us to see things. And typically, when you put uh, living matter in the SEM, it doesn't do so well anyway. So it has to be like hard components. There's another little amoeba. Just tons of amoeba in the samples. I want to brighten that a little bit. This one looks like it's eaten something round. Their movement is just so slow. I feel like I could do like a, a long exposure or a, a s sort of a time lapse uh, from my camera and just let it roll for like a couple of hours and you'd probably just barely see that thing get anywhere. So there's another cockanese up here. This one actually has nothing is still impossible. On. Not if you can imagine it. Thank you for the follow, Arilla Grod. little wiggly tongue guys. They're all over the place in these samples. I don't know if it's a euglenoid. It's kind of what they look like to me. I don't know if Studio Cormix is still here. Maybe you know what those things are. There's a little diatom up there. The notification is loud. It's weird. Everything's messed up with the the volume settings for some reason. <laughs> you hear your name. Do you know what the little flagellated guys are? The like long skinny ones with the wiggly tongues that crawl around? So 
saw several of them. I don't remember what... I looked them up once, but... I'm better at remembering diatom names than I am at anything else, so... star-shaped ones. Slowly crawling across here. Yeah, Euglena, that's what I sort of thought. Is it a cheek sample? No, this is a sample from a creek. You're close though, super close. Uh, a Judd Creek. Um, yeah, that's what I thought it was, just some sort of Euglenoid more diatom skeletons. So we should have some diatom stuff to look at um, on the SEM from these. I'm hopeful we'll see at least some. Oh, what do we have here? Something very spiny. Not sure what that is either. Some sort of encapsulated part of an insect carapace, I think, based on the size. It's just amoeba everywhere in these samples. Euglena, amoeba, diatom? Not sure we've seen anything else other than just debris. A little Gomphonema and Girdle View. Another Euglenoid. More Amoeba. Just all over the place. There's a giant diatom. I hope if I turn the light up a little. That's a, uh, a Cymbella. You can see it's not doing very well, but um, this is the color their chloroplasts usually are, this sort of orangish color, rusty brown or uh, golden brown, some people call it. I like to think of them as just orange, kind of orange colored chloroplasts. They're pigmented. And then there's another piece of an amoeba right there sticking up. It's just everywhere you go. Very rich with amoeba. Titoms and amoeba. Very nice. All right, let's switch it out. I got one more sample, which is from the beach, from them. And then I have some samples from lichen that I collected while we were out. Um, that sample's a little stinky. Um, from uh, some trees around Clear Lake where we were with my family. Um, and then I also collected some from around uh, another lake in um, Morrow Lake in Wisconsin that we went to. KVI Beach has a very popular beach on Bashan Island. I'm hoping to see some sand dollar larva. Well, uh, this was collected from like a week ago, maybe. So I don't think anything's living in it, except for the like ciliates and stuff. So uh, it stinks a little bit. So something was in there, but. Uh, These aren't like uh, Pacific Plankton samples where everything's kicking around, still living in them. Um, I mean, they got shipped to me and I'm in Indiana, so I'll give you some idea how long it's been. Might be okay, I don't know. We'll see. lid on this thing though. It's 
smells kind of bad. Not as bad as the samples that Pacific Plankton normally sends me. Those usually smell rancid. Oh. Well, we can tell we're looking at marine samples because that's an isthmia. So this is on Puget Sound, so it's an estuary, right? And uh, that is Ismia, which is a giant marine benthic diatom, one of the largest uh, that I've seen. I mean, this particular one's not extremely large, but that's a diatom. What's cool about that, um, which we pointed out sometimes on Pacific Plankton points out, is that uh, they are single cell. It's a single cell organism right there. And the little guys that are all around, bacteria, but also those amoeba and things that we were seeing, they're really much smaller than this thing. So despite the fact that it's a single cell, it's enormous. There's a bunch of little, not sure what that is. I mean, I know it's a diatom. I just don't know what uh, genus it is. Could be some sort of anitia. It could be some sort of fragilarioid. A little bit too small for us to see, but when we get it on the scanning electron microscope, we'll see it. But mostly there's bacteria crawling around in the sample, so my guess is there's not a ton of like sand dollar larvae k k kicking around in here. There is a Pleurocyra, probably. Sort of sigmoid shape. You don't link your published papers. I see someone that may be you on ResearchGate. Oh, if you're on a, um, a PC and you can scroll down, um, the About Me section has a link. So just below me down here, there's an About Me section with a link to my research and it will take you right to me on uh, ResearchGate. And there's dozens of publications there. In the last... Um, I want to say in the last two years, I have about 15 publications, maybe more. So um, there's plenty of stuff there if you're interested in it. Yeah, that's me. So you should be able to get it uh, if you're interested. I, I don't usually push my research onto people because I feel like um, most of the people that are here on Twitch are not scientists and they don't necessarily care about the minutia of, you know, diatoms and what I do with them. They want to see things wiggle around and uh, maybe see some cool uh, organisms or see some really interesting uh, images. I do a lot of streams from my camera as well. So I do some birding streams and um, you can see all those little uh, wiggly bacteria on there, the ones that are kind of like, uh, yeah, these ones like little worm shapes. Those are bacteria. Bacteria. Yeah, spiral bacteria. You can see them all over in here, just kind of wiggling around. That's about as interesting as bacteria gets. <laughs> you've, you've reached peak bacteria. Uh, although maybe we can find some little, sometimes there's like a, section where there's a bunch of stuff being decayed and there's a ton of bacteria that are all together um, and then they're acting kind of interesting but yeah i don't usually talk about the research very much but i do sometimes do interviews so if you are interested in the science uh you can check out the wow look at how busy that is it's crazy there um I do sometimes do interviews, and I was thinking I haven't done any science interviews in a while, um, so I want to try to do a few more science interviews 
um, with colleagues or people that just want to come on and to talk about their research a little bit. So um, mostly I would focus on people who study lakes uh, or lake reconstructions um, or maybe some diatom taxonomy stuff. But um, it's on my to-do list to try to add a few more. I've done maybe three or four interviews. Um, and I kind of like to do the interview format, especially because it's people like, um, scientists don't get a chance to talk to the public very frequently, like directly. And so, um, especially about research and answer like, you know, any questions they might have and try to talk to people, you know, you can point somebody's, you can point Good news, everyone. To your paper to somebody, but it's a, there's a pretty big difference between that and, um, yeah, they're on YouTube. Uh, all the interviews that I do um, and all of my streams are recorded on, on YouTube as well. I just archive them there. So um, I just do the interviews through Zoom on, on Twitch and then it saves them. And um, I, I kind of like this format a little bit better than YouTube. Um, YouTube's kind of geared towards, you know, they're trying to make themselves into TikTok now. So they're kind of geared towards like shorter videos and I'd like to do something that's not like a two minute or 10 minute interview. I want something that's like where people can really kind of sink their teeth in and, um, and learn and ask questions and the people who are doing the research actually can just sort of express their own ideas. So, and it, I think it's kind of nice because I'm, you know, I'm a scientist and uh, I think it's a, it's a little bit different to have a scientist interview you because I can ask questions um, you know, that, that an interview person probably wouldn't ask, um, and probably get the, some, I like to think I can get some pretty cool stories out of scientists, um, just to kind of give people a different sense of, you know, what a scientist is. A lot of people think of scientists as, um, you know, people wearing lab coats and, having a very sort of different view of what a scientist is than, I don't know, people that are me and my friends typically. So, and I think it's nice to give them an outlet and give people a chance to actually interact with, um, with them about their research. So, um, it's my long-term objective is to try to transform into a little bit less microscope time and a little bit more interviews or sort of an even mix of it. But like I said, I also do a lot of just photography streams um, when I'm not on the, um, the SEM or the light microscope, I just point my camera at thunderstorms or the moon or birds or anything really tiny that's far away, stars, or tiny that's really close. So, um, that's just sort of the limits of what I study and what I like to do as hobbies. So, there's a whole bunch of diatoms in a colony right there. That's a, that's a huge colony of diatoms right there. See all the cells lined up, each one of those little blocks is a, is a cell and they live in a colony together. It's pretty cool. I can't tell what it is because they're all together, but um, it's kind of a neat little ribbon colony. And I saw some other sort of bigger colonies in here as well. Some of the benthic diatoms are pretty interesting, but like I said, I'm not seeing a whole lot kicking around studio, so the, uh, the bacteria are doing most of the moving. a lot of bacteria. You can really see it here, but you know, this is what happens when you put something in the mail for a week. You get, there's a whole bunch, there's a bacteria, this sort of cool thing where they kind of go on a little highway area. And like they're in this little, 
this little zone right here. It's kind of moving back and forth in this little zone. See that zone kind of extends down here. Anyway, that's some kind of cool behavior. It's not a lot moving though. it for the uh, Puget Sound samples. Pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, there's a ton of bacteria, so I won't mind treating these samples to kill everything because the diatoms look like they're mostly dead and the bacteria are mostly what's living in it. So I also collected some, uh, just some, some logs or sticks really uh, that were just covered with lichen and um, sometimes I like to just kind of look around and see if we can find anything in those as well. So some sort of nematode worms are usually pretty common and um, uh, sometimes we find water bears in lichen and I've been letting this soak for a little bit in water but all I really did was take some of the lichen and scrape it using a, a metal knife and uh, scraping it into a bowl. And then I just put some first osmosis purified water on it. And I just let it sit for a little while. And there's this whole sort of community of things that live in lichens. And um, they're, they're dehydrated, but they rehydrate and then uh, can kind of come right back to life. So, and I'm not gonna put a cover slip on this. So hopefully I can get it onto my microscope without making too much of a wet mess. And then I'm gonna back out a little bit on the magnification because I don't have a cover slip on. And no promises there's anything even in these, but uh, if there is, we'll see them. There goes a the nematode worm. Um, They should be rehydrated by this point, anything that's alive or coming back to life from rehydration. So sometimes we'll see rotifers and nematode worms and little archella uh, amoeba, water bears, who knows? Maybe nothing. Maybe I found a particularly uninteresting part of a uh, lichen. You never know. Not sure what that is. Can't find more than one video on YouTube. Um, let's see, I know I have an interview with Mike McGlue and I have an interview with uh, Joe Mohan and I did one with um, Rachel Lupian and one with Sabrina Brown. I don't know if Sabrina's made it to YouTube but um, like I said, I'll be doing some more in the future. So you could just, you know, keep an eye out for it. I usually post something about it in the Discord um, or on Twitter to let people know that I'm gonna do an interview. And then the live interviews are more interesting anyway, because then you can kind of ask questions and get to interact with me and whoever I'm interviewing a little bit more. I was hoping for a little bit more wiggles than what we got going on right here. Dead nematode worms. there. I 
think it's alive. It seems to be moving. It could just be drifting. Slight drift on the slide. So it could just be being carried. Piece of dead rotifer. Not very encouraging. Usually, when I look around in sticks that have fallen off of trees and they're covered with lichen, it's usually where we find the best stuff. Oh, here's something. Oh, it's a water bear. Here we go. See it crawling around. That's actually a pretty big one. Here we go. We got one. Um, so you can tell that it's a water bear. It has uh, eight legs. You can't see all eight of them right now, but you will. Um, the front six legs it used to crawl around with, and the back two legs are kind of grasping legs, and they're kind of pointed backwards, like, uh, like a scallop tail almost. Um, but you can usually tell from the way that they're moving um, because their front legs are always crawling around and grasping for something like this one's are. And then they've got a head with a little newt newt mouth. And um, let's see, usually when we get a water bear, I do one of these. And then I think I have a command for something for water bears, but I don't remember what it is. And then sometimes I put up the little sexy uh, Cardi B that was drawn by little Chook. Um, sexy water bear. Here we go. If it clears out from this pile of debris, we can actually see it. This one is super active. It's just crawling around super fast. But you can see at the ends of their, um, their legs, they have little tiny claws, sets of little claws. And um, water bears kind of crack me up because they're like, uh, they seem so helpless all the time. Let's see if I can fix the lighting a little bit. Get the DIC effect in there. It went behind this big pile of lichen that's right here. Now it's coming out on the other side. So far, um, any lichen that has fallen off of a tree from a stick has always had water bears. I've always found some. So if you're out, if you got some sort of a microscope at home, I'm actually on, uh, I'm only on 10x, um, but the eyepiece is another 10x, so it's actually 100 times magnification. And then um, this is 3x uh, magnified on top of it from my camera currently, so like, here's a scale bar right there. Let's see if I can move that a little bit because it's kind of being blocked. That's a scale bar that's accurate. I measured using a stage micrometer, and the water bear is doesn't want to come out from behind this clump of lichen. Oops, there it is. There you go, you can see. You would if it was sit still. It's really active. GL No 52, yes, it's a water bear. It's not quite 300 time magnification, it's more like 260 or something because the 210, I'm trying to do some math in my head. The eyepiece ones are 10x, but the camera one is actually 0.7. So it's um, not quite 10, but 
seven times magnification. So it's like 70 times three, 210, yeah. So 210 times its normal size. And we see water bears and pretty much any time I go looking through lichens, I find them. Um, as long as they were collected from branches. I don't know why, but I have no look, luck looking through mosses. Then, you know, their other name is moss piglet, but um, All right. uh, but I never find them in moss. Never found them in moss. Oh, there was something else there. There's something else on the other side of that lichen. It's moving around. I don't think it was the water bear. Um, I think it's actually on the other, like, literally on the other side of it, not on the top. If I was walking around on the top, I would switch to dark field and we'd be able to see. Remember all the happy times we had? There we go. Hey, Devil and Mrs. J. Wow is one of the words that sends off little diatoms when you say it. Uh, what is the green stuff in its body? Like, yeah, it probably is a little bit of lichen or a little bit of um, algae that was growing, you know, on the tree. Because um, they, they'll eat, you know, I think they mostly are, they'll eat whatever they can find that's edible. Um, you can see they have little, their little claws on the ends of each of their feet. And, um, let me see if I can fix the, the brightness issue. It's like a little bright. My choices are like too bright when I'm on the out outermost view or too dark when I'm in close. There we go. He just keeps going around in circles. He probably thinks he's going somewhere. He probably doesn't realize this whole time he's just been trapped on one little piece of lichen. Does it poop? Yeah, they poop. Um, are they light sensitive? Some water bears have eyes and some do not. Um, and actually you can see them when they have them. Um, if we get a nice clear view of its face, unfortunately it's moving so fast that I can't quite get its eyes in focus whenever it's, you know, whenever it's free of the debris. Um, I can't quite get a clear view of its face. Um, but some of them do, they have little like eye spots um, that suggest that they're at least light sensitive. And then some of them have no eyes whatsoever. So, uh, but they don't really use them for seeing, they just use them probably for like detecting light. I think they mostly just sort of grope around in the, the, um, the materials that they're in. I think they just kind of like, explore through going places basically um, and try to you know try to grab whatever they can get their little claws on so it may end up just going round and round on this piece of lichen for hours never realizing that there's anywhere else to go <laughs> not particularly uh, brilliant with regard to their environment but they're also not used to being on a microscope slide so you know they're used to being on a stick where if they crawl around it takes them someplace and to get from one lichen patch to another is probably a little bit easier for them normally when I don't rip it all up so I can't remember what the um what the I think maybe I had a water bear command that wasn't it. 
I spelled it wrong. Wasn't that one either. I don't know. Oh, that brought out the water bear emote. If you spell it correctly, you get the emote. Another secret emote. Somewhere there's some information that will lead me to the answer, but I don't know what it is. We could just sit here and watch the water bear go round and round in this piece of lichen. That's probably all it will do for the next hour. Um, anyway, uh, that's pretty cool. One of my favorite things to find. And actually, I'm really glad we found something. So I was kind of looking around, there was nothing showing up. So let's see, we're at the top left corner, about a two tenths of the way in. So we can come back to this. Hey, you got a really kind of good look at its back legs for a second. Tardigrade, yeah. Um, let's go, let's go look around and see if we can find anything else. We'll come back here if we have to. the lichen of our aunt, so maybe we'll move those two pieces of lichen that that thing is on a little closer together. Oh, everything's starting to dry up a bit too. I'm not sure why that those bits of lichen are spinning around. slides really starting to dry up so because I don't have a cover slip on because I didn't want to squish anything but also that is a different water bear that's a different piece of lichen it's on it's also a big water bear, water bear. it might have been a rotifer that was spinning that other block around I don't know that's a water bear though for sure this one see him doing his weird little water bear. They look like little tiny caterpillars, you know? That's a different piece of lichen, so I know that's a different water bear. It's also in a different place than the other one. It's about the same size. I think it's probably the same species. Let's see about fixing that image for you. It's also a little bit slower than that other one was. That guy was just super crawly. You can see that the, the water drop, the meniscus of the water is sort of causing a rainbow effect around it. You can see its face a little bit better now. That one just has a, like a, they have a really short nose, a little snout, a little newt newt snout. So we put some of these on the SEM too, but um, really they just kind of deflate in the vacuum so they look like little trash bags with claws, legs and claws. So um, I still think they look kind of cool, but um, if you want to see those, the Instagram has uh, some pictures of water bear claws. That's my Instagram page for the, the lab and also for my photography. back legs you can see they're kind of reversed 
and they don't use the back legs to to grab stuff. I mean, they use them to grab stuff. They don't use them to kind of grope around or crawl with. So they kind of drag them. like the other one, it just goes around and around on this little piece of lichen. some pretty cool stuff, I think. Uh, some really interesting amoeba, and um, this was a, a nice little foray into the microscope world, I think. Um, oh, I got the... What was I gonna do? Oh yeah, I got this... Um, credits that will roll. Thanks for hanging out with me, credits. I think it's supposed to list people that followed. I don't know if it'll update it or maybe it won't. I thought it was supposed to, but it doesn't look like it's doing it. Nope. Um, I'll figure it out eventually. Um, so we had follows from Merval. Muro Views, um, Aurelagrod, Mr. 13, Revolution 87, Redcons 2, and um, Ev Griff 42, and then of course I think they came in with Viseria's raiding party, which brought 96 people in, so thank you to Viseria. And um, I can give a little shout out to Faye. Um, if you don't know, or you haven't been following Viseria, Is it just Faye? Yeah. So, that, uh, they're so if you haven't been following her, um, she does music and sometimes does microscope and sometimes she draws. Um, she's a very entertaining um, uh, streamer. She's got a great voice and sings a lot of really great songs. Um, so you should check her out. And then we also had a follow from Beanold before that. Um, about an hour ago. So um, I'll say thanks to everybody for hanging out and for dropping in. We'll, um, I want to do a stream where I just focus on hummingbirds one of these days. I just haven't been streaming a lot recently because I've been busy at work. Um, but we're going to do a raid. So a let's give a raid to like Jay Renzella, another um, friend of mine who was watching their stream you know, earlier. When you pay with Credit Karma money, you could win in commercials, and um, and then we'll we'll see everybody soon. How's that sound? Um, hopefully Jay's still hanging out. Jay's a wood carver, and um, he comes to the streams regularly, and he also carved some diatoms and plankton uh, stuff for my friend Pacific Plankton and I. And uh, he's a really cool, uh, very laid back sort of streamer. He does wood carvings and the tattoo art and um, streams mostly the wood carving stuff. He's been working on this sort of fish project for a really long time now. All right, so it's been fun. We saw some really cool stuff. We got this water bear. We got the, all the diatoms and other stuff. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Probably I'll be on Wednesday, but I'm not positive about that from the SEM. And I might do another microscope stream or, or bird stream or something real soon. So um, thanks for Studio Karmix for hanging out and um, for all the followers and for Sam Shung and Devil and Mrs. J. Um, and if you like the microscope streaming, you should check out 
um, any of these people, um, they do microscope based dreams, really great stuff. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of cool people in there. They do a lot of really great stuff. I recommend all of them. So, all right. Um, we'll see everybody later and, uh, we're going to raid. Let's go get, well, raiding an art. We're going to raid an art. Space, uh, I have a um, space pen. The astronauts had to pack a pencil. Yeah, right. They have the pen that works in zero gravity, right? Or microgravity. Do you have one of those? Do you draw with it? Oh, we got a raid. I missed it. What's up, raiders? Hey, Diatom's attack. How's it going? <laughs> 